Can I just run it back just a little bit? And I want to talk about the question of consciousness just a little bit. Um, yeah. Obviously, consciousness is not required for extinction, right? Right. Uh, whether a robot is conscious or not when it kills you or you just die, you know, it doesn't really matter. But do you right. believe it is 0.0% consciousness in the systems right now or is it something else? Honestly, I have no idea. I mean, I, I have my doubts. I I think, um, you know, it, so, so first of all, yeah, you're, you're right. It, it absolutely doesn't matter from the point of view of what it's going to do yeah. because we can, we can understand or we can try to understand it as a piece of software that is operating according to the you know, the way programs are executed on the machine that it's running on. And nothing is going to change that. So if you, if I'm, if I looked at this program and I thought for a long time and did a bunch of calculations and I said, yep, this program is going to take over the world and destroy the human race, right? That prediction has nothing to do with whether it's conscious. If you then told me, oh, when that program runs, you know, by some mysterious theory that doesn't yet exist, it's going to be conscious. Does that change anything about your prediction? No, not at all, because it doesn't change the physics of the computer and the rules of the software that, that's running. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, it it's an important question because it it brings in the issue of whether the AI system is having subjective experience, whether it's suffering or, or happy right. or or anything like that, uh, and that, that gets into its moral rights, whether you can switch it off, and so on. But in terms of um, the issue of safety, uh, you know, is it going to take over the world and destroy us? It has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, and that's another thing that the media often get wrong. Yeah. Is this, you know, as long as it doesn't become conscious, everything's fine. Right. Right. Because look. You know, if I really, really care about whether I'm going to win a game of chess against the computer, you know, I do care because, you know, I, I care about my little my little rating. Uh, but it's I don't think the pro the chess program that beats me is conscious, but it beats me. Uh, it doesn't totally. need to be conscious to beat me. It just needs to be good at chess. And yeah, the same is true for, you know, beating us in the real world. Yeah. Okay getting their own way and not what we want uh, yeah. in the world. Let me ask you this. I know it's a term that's thrown around. Everybody loves to talk about it. I don't know if you have, if you hate the term, if you love the term, if you have one, but but what are your thoughts on PDOOM? Do you have one? Um, and generally, or do you find it useful? Um, so PDOOM, right, the, the, the probability that we are going to go extinct as a result of super intelligent AI yeah. Uh it, it certainly makes sense if you're an alien looking down on the earth. You know, you're in a bar with your other alien friends and you're taking bets on, you know, are these humans gonna, gonna make <laughs> it or are they gonna screw up and, and build their own destruction? Um then that that's a reasonable place to have P Doom. Perhaps they're already up there betting on us. Um but you know, when you're involved in the human race uh you know you're you're just trying to do your best to have the outcome not be human extinction uh so it's not like weather forecasting which where we can't really influence the weather it's yeah. more like steering a ship where we you know you, you you know if you're the captain of a ship or the the pilot of a ship you don't think about you know what's the probability that we're going to crash and, and drown you just work, you know, do your best to steer away not from drown. The, right. <laughs> not drown. So that's what we're trying to do. Now, I I do think it's worth thinking about what are the forces at play? You know, how powerful are they? You know, what you know, is this strategy going to work? Um, you know, what what's the best way to get governments to pay attention, to get people uh, the yes. general public to pay attention. Uh, what is you know what's the opposition doing? 
Um, you know, and and here I would say uh, that we we might think of at least some of the AI companies as the opposition because they appear to be dead set on creating what they assert probably correctly would be the most powerful technology in the history of the human race. Absolutely. And they have no plan for how to control it. You know, Professor, for this reason, I call them the doomers. They are creating the doom. You the and doom I create... are not doomers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I I think it's it's an unfortunate narrative that that we're in where um where it's becoming kind of tribal and uh, what what do i mean by that i mean it's it's tribal means that you we're kind of you know we should be all working on this together but instead we're dividing up into a kind of a pro ai camp or what what calls itself the pro ai pro technology camp and then yeah and then the other side is the anti AI. I am not anti AI. I've been working on AI for for almost fifty years. My entire adult life has been devoted to to AI. Um, I'm not anti AI any more than you know a nuclear engineer who works on containment of fission reactions so that we can get useful energy out is anti physics. <laughs> I mean. That would be ridiculous. He's he's a nuclear engineer. He's not yeah. anti-nuclear. He's just making sure that it doesn't blow up. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if AI blows up, we don't get any benefits from AI. and We don't get any more AI either, right? At least not that we're aware of because we're all gone. Yeah. Um, so so this whole narrative, which which I would say, you know, A16Z, Mark Andreessen in particular, is is pushing this very, very strongly that anyone who talks about containing AI yeah. or worries about making sure that it's safe and beneficial, you know, literally he's calling us the Antichrist. Uh, you know, as, as I think Peter Thiel used that phrase yeah. Yeah. more specifically. Um, uh, this is this is beyond the pale as, as far as I can see. It. Um, uh, but it's real, right? Mark Andreessen was largely responsible by making a large donation to Trump before the election, was largely responsible for the U.S. policy on AI shifting from, I think, reasonably responsible and globally cooperative approach under Biden uh, to uh, a policy of the U.S. is going to dominate the world with AI and there shall be no regulation of AI uh, 